The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, staff, management, or advertisers. Coming to you on stations coast to coast, it's the Making It Radio Show with your hosts, self-made millionaires, Tommy Runfola and Todd Williams. Tommy Runfola, founder and president of one of America's top technology consumer products and media companies, author, investor, and National Entrepreneur of the Year nominee. Tommy has worked with five U.S. presidents and vice presidents. Todd Williams, founder and CEO of Inc. Magazine's 2013 fastest growing food and beverage companies in America, a former NBC TV personality and Harvard Business alumnus. Make It It is the source for success stories and in the trenches information that outlines a roadmap to the American dream. And now, here's Tommy and Todd. Welcome, America. This is Tommy Runfola with my co-host, Mr. Todd Williams, and we're making it coast to coast. Todd, how you doing today? Uh, exciting year ahead. I'm doing good today. Uh, we're gaining steam here, Tommy. Yes. I mean, yes. we have a lot of uh, surprises ahead for the show, a lot of changes, good changes. Uh, we have a fantastic a great audience to reach and uh so it's looking good for 2017 and they they can see us now all yes. they have to do is tune into us on um, youtube or from uh, making it now.com and they can see uh, what happens behind the scenes that's the whole thing now you got to be able to be heard yeah. seen the whole nine yards well they're they're going to know now when they see you that you are How handsome probably more handsome than Denzel Washington. <laughs> yeah. As, as a matter of fact. Way to I, put the expectations up there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you're kind of a cross between <laughs> Muhammad Ali's personality and Denzel Washington's looks. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're quite the guy. Well, quite and just so our listeners out there also know, Tommy almost showed up wearing his superhero costume today because his shirt was reflecting our green screen. Yes. And so as our producer, Doug, was explaining to us, it was going to look like you were transparent parent over there i would have been a talking head you were going to be a talking head a Absolutely. floating bobblehead over there yeah. exactly that's translated what Brittany just said is i agree todd you are a thing <laughs> yeah, that's that's what she meant to that's say she meant. but she got distracted i accept i, can neither confirm, I accept Brittany. Yeah. nor deny that statement i accept Brittany. <laughs> i accept all right so our esteemed moderator and news anchor Brittany dorsey yes. has got some goods for us yeah What's up? i got a rough job of keeping you guys in control today but uh we're gonna go through our new segments and first up we're gonna be doing our show buzz segment we have one of tommy's favorite shows featured and these are business reality shows by the way so we're yes. discussing the businesses on these businesses reality shows then we have our danger report and we have Ooh. a good one for today all right gonna keep you waiting on that one then we have our the fix segment again where you two give your recommendations and advice on how we would fix a business that's currently in trouble and failing, what you would do to turn them around. Then we have our deep dive segment. Tommy is the star of this one today. He's giving a candid and personal story about a business from his own personal experience as a customer. Yes. And then we have our making it, breaking it to wrap. And we have another great segment for that. All right. Well, Brittany, you uh, you set it up. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite shows yes, today. Yes, I love these reality shows that are about business. Exactly, me too. Yeah, I really relate, and I'm sure a lot of uh, of our fan base does as well. All right, so first up, we're going to be talking about the show The Profit, and Marcus Lemonis is the star of this show. Now, he's not only the guy that goes in and tells them how to run their businesses, what to turn around, what to fix so they become profitable. He's also in this situation offering these struggling businesses investment capital. Right. So he's going in as a potential investor. First of all, I love that he's going in and evaluating, is this business even something worth investing in as an investor? And then he gets to go in and invest his capital and make sure that, that they do the right things with it so he gets his return. Right. So I like the whole setup. I like watching everything that he looks at, that he evaluates, and that he judges as an investor and then as somebody who's this you know turnaround magician in these businesses. Yeah, I like that as well. And in fact, uh, Marcus Lemonis is one of my new heroes mm -hmm. uh, because of what he does. He, he puts his money where his mouth is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's one thing to do a, a TV show. It's another one to put up $25 million, which is what he has given away 
so far to these businesses. And when I say given away, he really hasn't given away. He's, he's invested. In, he's invested. And and he takes complete control when he puts his money in. Mm -hmm. And really, that's the best thing that ever happened to these businesses because they do it his way. Right. And his way is the right way. Right. He has built a two billion. He's worth two mm -hmm. billion dollars. Wow. He's built, built a, a multi-billion dollar empire. Uh, he's the CEO of... Uh, a business called Camping World, which is, uh, you know, known all over the country. And, uh, you know, he's quite a guy and he really knows what he's talking mm -hmm. about. You can learn a lot uh, on this show as well. Uh, one thing I is I see the reasons why 80% of businesses fail. Right. The, uh, the people that he typically goes to, which I think is very representative of a lot of businesses in America, uh, there's... 27 28 million total businesses in america and i think at least half of them are just a uh, one person businesses and then you get to the one to four employee businesses or the next and so when you you go into a lot of these businesses uh these people are so mom and pop right it it, it reminds me mom and pop mentality absolutely and so he's having mm -hmm. to come in and like re uh reorganize the business and retrain them to be an actual business person and retrain their mindset it, get them to actually think bigger about their businesses you right. know it reminds me of uh there's one episode on the sopranos show uh the tony soprano his favorite restaurant he came to you know this a husband and wife owned it italian restaurant and he wanted to um tony soprano wanted to invest in their, their business to take their uh, spaghetti their, their their pot their sauce yeah but you know what investment by the mafia exactly means. yeah but yeah. he said this the legit business burns down in he six said months no he they said collect this, the insurance he said we're friends this is legitimate <laughs> i want to take your uh your sauce into the supermarkets yeah. whatever and so th the show was there thinking about it and then at the end the wife was in the back of the kitchen and she said no we're not taking this sauce outside of this restaurant Ooh. this is a this is a family business we're not taking our sauce out to the public we're keeping it family we're keeping it for our customers. We're keeping it small. That represents mom and pop to me. Of course. You know, that type of mentality says don't go big. Yeah. And a lot of these businesses are like that that he goes into. Well, the, you know, the, the impression I get when you say mom and pop is exactly the types of businesses that he goes into. And you'll find with almost every one of those businesses, there's a common mistake. They don't have the fundamentals down about basic business. Exactly. Uh, they they don't know how to be organized. They they don't have systems in place. Uh, they are unaware of what their cost of goods are. They're not run by the numbers. They're not run by the numbers. They don't really have someone in the business with a firm grasp of the numbers. And if they do, they don't listen to him. So uh, you know, there's things that you can find in common in all of these small businesses that they do wrong and that he just goes in there and objectively mm -hmm. fixes them one at a time. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Making It with Tommy and Todd. This is Brittany. You can check out all of our past episodes on makingitnow.com. So another thing that I like about what he does is he goes in as an investor and he's evaluating like them, like you said, Tommy, by the numbers. He's looking at, you know, all the numbers that you have to pay attention to in business financially. But then he also knows operationally what to do Absolutely. to cause the change that ends up on the P&L, which is, I think that's a lot of times where a lot of, especially small business owners, like you were saying, Todd, mom and pops, what they get into is they'll get to the point of advancing to look at their P&Ls, look at their income statements, look at all those financial numbers. They'll know the direction they need to change them and grow their organization, but then they don't know what to focus on operationally to actually cause that financial change and financial return that they want to see in their business. I mean, just, just think how how valuable this is to have a billionaire mm -hmm. come into your business and not only tell you what you're doing wrong, but put their own money in. Yeah. You know, I was watching to an, an episode last night uh, on YouTube and, and in fact, he put in four hundred thousand dollars in mm -hmm. cash into this very small business. That's life changing to a small business. Absolutely. I mean, they they never had a forty thousand dollar investor, let alone a four hundred thousand dollar investor. And then he tells them what to do exactly. to be a great success. He tells them where to put that money to make it count. Right. But see, that's just the thing. What you just said. Uh, a lot of them don't see value correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, like you said, they have a billionaire coming in there, and so many of the episodes. They're arguing with him. Right. I mean, they have, you know, a lot of them have weak egos. They're not grateful 
for having someone that's a billionaire come in and teach them because they're stuck in a small mindset that says uh, of their idea of right, not the customer's Absolutely. idea of right. And that's what's getting them in trouble in the first place. Yeah. And they have, uh, you know, and so they're about ego versus profit, um, a lot of them. So he's coming in saying, you know, this is a business. This has to make a profit. You have to do what the customer wants. And they're thinking, no, I don't want to do that because that goes against what my idea of right is. Right. And there's a conflict. You, you know, if you look at uh, 100% of small businesses, and we're talking, you know, from one man shops to, you know, 50 people, let's say. That they are always seem to focus on operations or whatever their product is. You know, it's all about that, and they 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 don't do anything with strategy. They don't have vision. Uh, they don't know anything about marketing and sales, uh, about branding, uh, about scaling. Uh, they oftentimes, don't have a good finance person in place. Uh, they don't have good systems, uh, good processes, uh, and all they have is an operation that they kind of believe in, that, you know, a service that they offer or whatever. Uh, even, if, you know, if they're a small business like uh, a lawyer or a doctor, they, they may be very good at their uh, profession, but, you know, at the, end of the, at the end of the month, it's more about how many dollars are left, not how many people you served. And, and that's a mistake that small businesses uh, have in common. The, uh, more specifically than uh, operations mindset, it's more of a service-driven mindset, that not sales-driven. Right. And so they come in and they think that the value is in just the service they're doing, right? not in the intangible benefit uh, or the intangible experience that the customer's receiving. Right. And they find it so hard to think you're not valuing what I'm doing on the service end. Yes. And it's not that it doesn't need done, they're devaluing things that are not service so and that includes the mentorship from the profit yes and and you know one of the shows i watch uh, several of them you know that they they'll fire their best employee absolutely you know because of an ego clash right they don't get along and the profit's whatever. like are you insane mm -hmm. right you, you let her go of everyone mm -hmm. because they're having uh that that best employee is making them feel bad about themselves or threatening them. Right. And so all these decisions are being made that are, are so bad for the survival of the business based on the, the uh, owner's ego. Yeah. You know, when, when my wife and I were, for what, were watching uh, uh, The Prophet the last time we had it on, uh, she made a statement that I think is very true and, and relates to all these small businesses. And she says, you, you must be smart enough to know what you don't know. Right. And a, a lot of small businessmen uh, really are convinced, at least within themselves, that they know everything there is to know about their particular business because they started it and it was their brainchild and maybe this is what they've done their whole life working for someone else. And th that's just not the way it is. You you have to, to know your strengths and you have to understand your weaknesses because those weaknesses will kill you. They may know about their business, but they usually don't know how to sell their business. Right and how to create demand in their business. Yeah, and that's one place that I think Marcus Limonis does a really great job at, you know, it, it's hard to do a reality show. It's hard to sum up and really get something valuable across to viewers, especially in a reality show. I think he does a really great example of every single show showing the operational changes and the strategic changes to make in a business. And every single time he emphasizes the drive back to the profit, right. the, the P&L, the, the income going up, and so when he's going through with these businesses, I think one of the reasons that he is so successful in mitigating their egos is he's saying, okay, you're set in your ways, you're trying to do something a certain way, but if you change it and you do it my way instead, it will make your income go up instantly. And here, let's do it together. Let's prove it. Yeah. You, you know, I, I think what every small business needs to know and really what this show is about when you watch it. it Running a small business is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have good people, if you have a vision and strategy for that business, uh, if you have a product or service that's wanted and needed in the marketplace, and if you understand the importance of branding, uh, understand uh, where marketing and sales fits into all that, uh, you have the making of a successful business, and you have to have somebody who watches the numbers mm -hmm. as well. I think um, one thing that was learned in this segment is it's hard to do a reality show 
Oh, yeah. What Brittany said. Of course. Well, if you, you want know, to check out our semi reality. reality show behind the scenes, check us out on makingitnow.com and you can check out our behind the scenes clips, YouTube channel, all that. It's kind of like a reality show, guys. We're we're our own reality yeah, show. Yeah, and you we're can on see TV our reality. Yeah. This isn't hard. This is easy. Todd, what are you talking about? You're listening to Making It Coast to Coast.